All right, so I'm recording myself, so this is a little weird for me, but what we call the gods are forgotten ancestors. They are the messages of our ancestors speaking to us through the body. Genetic memory. It becomes idolatry and paganism when we then hold on to those echoes as like The thing itself. So, like, we descend from the gods. This phrase in an American heard by someone who is perhaps of an at a traditionally American background, which would include some kind of Protestant Christianity, um, vague Anglo-Saxonisms, um, race wars between white and black people, um, et cetera, et cetera. Hearing this whole thing about um, we descend from the gods might seem a little hokey because gods are just fairy tales and myths and legends and not real, right? But we live in the modern age where we believe in real things because we have rationalism now. The ancient Irish scholars of the monasteries actually solved this problem of the gods being forgotten ancestors. And they figured this out because of the revelation of Jesus Christ. So you had these men who were typically, um, you know, Irish Gaelic, right? Which is Celtic tribe. Celt it pretty much means nothing in English. Um, they would have been familiar because this is a pre-literate society we got to remember that too this is before literacy we had scriptoriums and this is how books were preserved is because monks would take time to just sit and rewrite shit by hand so the things that they would have been familiar with like the media right they don't have marvel or disney right so the things they would have been familiar with would have been what we call right? Ancient Irish mythology, right? Um, which to them, I mean, of course, mythology is an English word. So I don't know if ancient Irish Celts, whatever, would be calling these stories mythology, if they would even understand you, what that means if you use that word. Essentially, though, they would be familiar with what's called the Laura Nabala Erin, or the um, the Six Cycles invasion of Ireland, or the takings of Ireland, right? They would have been familiar with these stories. And this is where, of course, you know, basic bitch Americans, Wiccas, right? They hear about these ancient Irish gods. And one of them, of course, is uh, the Morrigan. She is the goddess of darkness and witchcraft and crows and shit. Ooh, spooky. Um... She, hold on, sorry. We're talking about gods being forgotten ancestors, right? So 
there's something in the American psychoanatomy. All right. Um, that when they hear these stories, they say, that's me. Right. But there's still this American interpretation, right? This lens that we look at everything of, oh, that's just uh, mythology, though. So that's not real. And then, I mean, you can get into this whole third space weirdness about um, what is really real, man? Uh, what's the fucking um, movie? Truth is, uh, reality is just what we tell each other, right? Uh, the, the Mouth of Madness, that's what the movie's called. But um, you can go that way, of course. That's where all of the weird like witchy, dark, occult stuff goes to is that there really there is no reality and you can make reality whatever you want, which, once again, going back to a traditional American mind who is a materialist, is irrelevant, like babble. Um, but it's irrelevant babble because it's the mind trying to speak for the body. And so the reason why you have things like Wicca nipping at the heel of the hyper-rationalist American endeavor is because we've forgotten our ancestors. We've forgotten who we are. And so now the ancestors are speaking to us unintelligibly and we interpret them as gods. But then, of course, there's that American frame that says the gods aren't real. And so it just, in the American context, it just gets delegated to fiction, right? Oh, he, okay, we can't handle, all right. So we have this great scheme made up where we tell you what reality is, what reality is based on matter. Um, if, if it's not made out of the stuff we call matter, then it's not real, right? Okay. Uh, but what happens when unreal things exist? Uh, oh, they don't really exist. Um, but if you want to pretend like they do, here's this other space over here we call fiction, where you can do stuff like that, break the rules of reality, I guess, um, in some ways, of to what we we're saying. And it's A-OK, -okay. we can still keep our rationalist, uh, materialist framework going here. But all that is, is that separation between the fictional and the rational is divorce, is um, forgetting the ancestors. But we're downstream, we've already lost the topic because we were talking about the ancient Irish scriptoriums and how they solved this problem of the gods being forgotten ancestors because they were reading these stories of the um, the gods of Ireland taking over Ireland and stuff like that and then the Milesians coming up and then essentially taking over Ireland. You get all the human Irish people from the Milesians and then the, uh, the gods of Ireland go into the hills and become the fairy folk. Um, and of course the fairy folk is another one of those, I guess, uh, thorns or like pain in the ass that just sticks around. And this can get into like cryptids and like American folklore and all that. But the point being though, is that you had these Irish monks who were very, um, they spoke to people. People came to them to know shit. All right. That's as simple as it is. And people came to them to know shit because they were the only fools writing shit down. Um, and so people were also giving them their shit to write. And so they'd get to have all these stories and stuff like that. And so now, of course, as you know, a traditional Gale being told these stories of the ancestors um, would be familiar with the Laura Nabala Aaron and those stories. But then you also have later on, of course, I mean, you have Roman Greece doing their bullshit. Um, they take over parts of 
Southern Britain, whatever, um, Romano-British and all that. And that has then an influence on the stories. But then there's the advent of Christianity, which is in a Gaelic context, a Roman like entry, like it came from Rome to an extent, but not necessarily. It's associated with Rome, Christianity, from a Gaelic context, I would think. Um, so the uh, language of the priests, the spiritual language, was would have been Latin because all the West just used Latin. Um, so if you're talking anything spirituality, and uh, you know history and esoteric shit, you're writing it in Latin. Um, and then, of course, you had nerds and scriptorians who translated into local languages. Point being, though, is that these Irish monks would have been at this vector of, you know, um, traditional stories of the takings of Ireland. But then also, sometimes because of Patrick, it, um, you've always had Christianity in the Isles since the beginning because of St. Andrew and St. Aristobulus. But something about Patrick changed where it became part of the identity. Like like the like the Gales saw themselves as Christian peoples because of Patrick. Um, so you have the patrician Christian narrative, and then you have the pre-patrician Roman Christian narrative. And then you have the ancient Irish, the fairy people, the Tua de Danon. Right. And then, um, of course, then the Roman thing would also include the Greeks because they just got to be in there too. Um, and these fools in these scriptoriums were the only fuckers who could gather all these stories and have the knowledge to know the languages to actually know all the stories and compare them with each other. And in time, see the thing with the, like the fairy stories is you have like fairy cults essentially is where you'd have people placating what they would call like the people of the hills giving them sacrifices essentially so that they wouldn't fuck up the farm or something um which the modern globalist anglo-american whatever mind interprets as like, oh, that's just quirky, fairy, irrational, like traditions, you know, they're just playing, it's make-believe, it's pretend. Um, it's just, oh, that's cute, that's quirky that they do that. Um, but it doesn't have any real efficacy, right? It's just stories you tell to spook kids. Um, but at the time of these scriptoriums, the, uh, they would have been living in a culture where these fools were literally like giving fairies like, a bowl of milk every night so that they wouldn't kidnap one of the kids and they really believe that and so a lot of this then i guess is tied to ritual is also real important and the separation between ritual and written language and this also gets again into go so many ways we're talking about the gods being forgotten ancestors so The thing that kind of sparked this whole uh, line of thought is a video on YouTube I'm watching called The Interconnectedness of the Aryan Peoples, which is a whole lot of mess in one sentence that I'm not even going to deal with right now. But uh, it's ugh, something just happened while I was watching the video that really kind of details my point in a beautiful way and it's so funny that it happened as i'm recording this sorry i took a break because people walking around and stuff but um as he's going through like this deep esoteric history of uh essentially the people of if you know you know um and then he it gets cut with a fucking YouTube ad for a Thanksgiving horror movie, uh, whatever, you know. And it's funny because it's essentially the, the premise of the movie is that there's this little 
old American town, right? Old stock American. So we're not talking on that immigrant crap. We're talking actual Americans. And uh, so they have a history with the pilgrims, essentially. And like the pilgrims were important in American history, but not all Americans are related to the pilgrims. So this is poignant, though, because essentially what this movie is doing is chopping at not like one of the branches, right? They're chopping at the root of American identity. So the premise of the movie is that there's this old town, American town, little small town vibes, right? And, uh, you know, they're having a Thanksgiving celebration, whatever. And uh, someone decides to dress like pilgrims, uh, specifically the mayor, the first mayor of the town, and uh, start killing people with axes, right? And, uh, I mean, the subversion of this movie is very clear, right? Uh, a white man calling is bad. Um, they're spooky, they're evil, they're going to kill you. Uh, they got axes and they're bloodthirsty. Uh, if they got this face and this outfit or they like this stuff, they're going to kill you. That is the message of the movie. Um, but the ad ends. Okay, this is all wrapped up. This is a fucking ad, okay? Um, the end of the ad, the guy says, I hope this movie, it's essentially he says, is like, I hope this movie is so memorable that it'll be brought up every Thanksgiving, right? So essentially like he's dumbass, probably doesn't even know what he's saying. Um, he just wants to be famous. He's essentially saying, I want to rewrite the narrative of Thanksgiving, replace the story that we tell every time we do this thing, but instead of giving you some hopeful thing about the natives and the Americans coming together and like people learning how to farm and the passing on of like um, the, the traditions of the land and keeping the land, um, instead it's turned into just a gore fest, right? And he's happy that that becomes the story that we tell people for generations, right? That's what he said he wanted he, this to be brought up every Thanksgiving. And that is the ancestors becoming the gods and it's so funny that it hap it's like an ad cut in the middle of my fucking history video with all this epic music and history and old language shit it gets cut in the middle of my fucking youtube ad saying hey i'm gonna destroy your entire identity and replace it with this bullshit um but that the fact that then this whole entire scenario sprung my whole thing about the gods being forgotten ancestors and how the ancient Irish monks fixed that problem because of Christianity. Uh, just had to detail that whole phenomenon because it's just hilarious how that all played out. Um, but essentially what I think these monks, what happened is that they were reading these stories and they were just thinking, oh, these are the fairy people of the hills, you know, uh, the Morrigan and Nuada and uh, Cullen and uh, uh, Lou uh, and all that. Like, oh, these are just the fairy people, right? But then they have this also, you know, unlike their pagan ancestors, they had this revelation of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Trinity, right? Now, Christianity was very susceptible to the Celts from the beginning because Celts were obsessed with threes. And they're like, yo, you worship a god who comes in threes? We're about it. So, right. Okay. essentially how the stories would have gone down before Patrick, pre-Patrick, right? Was this was the wisdom of, uh, see, there's so many layers, like how this bleeds into like the ancient Irish way of living, but then it's so funny how that connects to like the American way of living in so many ways. And, you know, 
in a very hyper modern context you would never think of like why would that be um but you had the brehan law and everything was broken down essentially you had the um the brehe who were the judges you had the re who were the chiefs and the kings and then you had the philly who were the poets um the language keepers right and it's called the brehan law the brehe the judges were essentially you know when you needed to sort shit out they were the top rung to sort shit out to go to um but this is kind of like a um fuck this reminds me of an example that mormons tried to use to like um explain mormonism to me when i was a teenager but it's a perfect example right now because the i'll explain that at another time but the brehid of need the philly because the law is written down or spoken of in language and the philly are the ones who keep the language so if the brehid do anything to hurt the philly then the philly are you know they lose the brehid essentially lose all of their power which is interpretation and then the rees come in and pretty much keep the brehid and the philly from fucking shit up with each other um this is important to understand um this is this the the structure that the people who inherited the stories of the Laura and Abala Aaron, um, this would have, they, because we're looking at this as outsiders, right? I'm explaining this whole thing like I'm at some top down perspective, right? They didn't have this, per, I mean, it's not that they couldn't achieve this perspective, I'm not saying that, but like they were in this stuff, right? They weren't just outside looking down. And that's the whole problem with modernity and other conversations. But, <clears throat> essentially this brehan society pre-patrick would have inherited these stories of lauren of aaron this is the period of the ancestor gods right of um forgetting the ancestors and thinking that they're gods and then doing these rituals which are um the ways of the ancestors right which we've remembered because the rituals is all about body so we remember it in our bodies. And then we know that there's a thing causing this. We can't remember what that thing is specifically, but it has power. And we call those powers the gods. And so then comes Patrick. See, Christianity was already in the Celtic, Gaelic, whatever um, milieu, but it was more of an obscure thing. Before Patrick, he made it mainstream. He made it part of the Irish, the Gaelic identity. But I don't think they would have called themselves necessarily Irish back then. But um, but all of the monks who were inheriting these stories would have been post-Patrick, right? So they would have been coming from a understanding being raised with both Christianity and the gods of Ireland, right? Whereas the pre-Patrick people generally were still just in the gods of Ireland thing, right? And so what Patrick essentially did when he came in, um, well, he did a lot by coming in, actually. There's a whole, how that just reverberates into like multiple societies, just what Patrick does. Um, but he pretty much brings the tradition of the Trinity to the Irish people, to their consciousness, right? He, bring, he doesn't just like bring it to them like a good to trade, he brings it to their conscious awareness. And then, you know, it takes a few generations to be raised in it to fully get it. So a couple generations down after Patrick, of course you had these monks who would have inherited both of these stories, plus all the sh stuff that happened in between the interactions of those two story lines, that is Roman Christianity, essentially or Roman slash Christianity and uh, the original Gaelic, right? But essentially what Patrick does is by bringing in the tradition of the Trinity, what these 
medieval Irish monks are realizing Patrick does by bringing in the tradition of the Trinity into the story of the Irish. Hey, these fuckers aren't gods. These are just our fucking great granddaddies. Which, once again, from a traditional American, hyper, well, it's funny saying traditional American because America is completely anti-traditional, so there really is no traditional American. But we still all know what a fucking American is. Um, coming from that perspective and looking at this whole phenomena, is wild. It's a wild experience. It completely is. 